Jeremiah chapter 32. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. So we've got two kings here we're being dated by. For the king of Babylon's army besieged Jerusalem. And Jeremiah the prophet, prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the king, which was in the king of Judah's house. So he's locked up. They don't want to hear the preacher, they don't want to hear God. For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up. And Jeremiah is in prison many times. By many by different people. Wherefore dost thou prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city to the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. That's what made the king angry. What are you doing going around here saying that this city is going to be destroyed? This city is going to be taken. This city is going to Babylon. Blah, 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 blah. Don't you have nationality? Don't you don't you wave the flag? Don't you care about your people? Don't you supposed to preach love and peace? Jail them. Put you in the jail. Yeah. Then you become a jailhouse minister. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, shall not escape out of the hand of Chaldean. Oh, now it's getting personal. Mr. King, you're going in the hands of the king of Babylon. Shall not escape out of the hand of Chaldeans, but shall surely be delivered in the hand of the king of Babylon. Now, is that the kind of news you want to hear? What if somebody walked up to the, to the White House today and put their finger in President Obama's face and said, Tomorrow, or next week, whatever, you are going into the enemy's hand when the enemy takes this land. You'll no more be President of the United States. But Americans and everybody in this country will be carried off somewhere. You think you'd be pleased? You think you'd enjoy the news? Do you think you want to get rid of you? What's the problem? Why jail the, pre the preacher? Why not just live him out? Eventually he'll die down. He'll shut up. He won't do nothing. No, but Jeremiah's on fire. He won't shut up. He's been going for 31 chapters. He had a time period. I'm not going to say the word of the Lord no more. I've had it. That's it. Thus says the Lord. I thought you, I thought you said Jeremiah ain't going to do it. Oh, I'm sorry. You know this guy's preaching in the streets. You know this guy's preaching in the public because they can't escape him. He's not in a, in a in a church house anywhere. Oh, you hear what that pastor's saying down there? Yeah, that's okay, but he only does it inside the walls of his church and blah, 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 blah. And no one hears him. He doesn't have a, a, a TV ministry. He doesn't have a radio ministry. And those that do, they're so flutey tooty and flutey roomy and, and full of flowers and all kind of messages like that. Well, he ain't a, those ain't a bother thing. You know, as long as he just does what he does inside of his church house. But Jeremiah is doing it publicly. And he's not preaching far, flowery ease. He's preaching the wrath of God upon judgment of sin. You know, leave me and my sin alone. That's what the nation of Judah is saying. We enjoy our sin. I don't know if we've read it before, but we enjoy offering bread and cakes and little, little wafers to the queen of heaven. We enjoy that. Leave us alone. And shall speak with him mouth to mouth. And his eyes shall behold his eyes. Uh, King Zedekiah, you are going to look Nebuchadnezzar in the face and talk to him. And he shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon. And there shall he be until I visit him. Ooh -ooh. That's God going to visit him. You think God's going to, hey, Zedekiah. Sit down. Let's let's have a little lunch. You know, I'm knocking on the door to say, "Come sup with me." You think that's what's going to happen? I don't think so. Though ye fight with the Chaldeans, 
you shall not prosper. Go ahead, get your army. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna do nothing. Babylon's gonna win. By the way, when you send your army into the Chaldeans, you're only going to do what Jeremiah said. There are going to be people that die by the sword. You want to make Jeremiah a liar? Tell your army, stay home. Because hasn't Jeremiah said that one of the things will be the sword? Jeremiah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make you a liar. I'm not going to fight with the Chaldeans. That way, no one will die by the sword. And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hamniel, the son of Shalom, thy uncle, shall come unto thee, saying, that God's going to be a prophet. By thee, my field that is in Antioch, that's where Jeremiah is from, for the right of redemption is thine to buy it. So Hamniel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court in the prison according to the word of the Lord. Uh, cousin, might be his cousin, something like that. They know who they are. And said unto me, What has Jeremiah been preaching? He's been preaching that Judah is become, it will be, and is now, an army occupation while the people of the Judahs, Judah, Judeans, Jerusalems, Jerusalemites are going to Babylon, right? So here comes his here comes his cousin, or whatever you want to call him. Hey, cousin Jeremiah. Hey, how's the jail life? Terrible. May I help you? Yeah, I want you to buy my property. And I got property in and all, right where everybody hates you. Buy my property in Anna, and they hate you there, and what happened? People in Anna wanted Jeremiah dead. But with it stretches far out to that realm, buy my field, I pray thee, that is in Anna, which is in the country of Benjamin. Benjamin was in Judah. The lands of Judah. Bethlehem, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, Jerusalem is actually Benjamin territory. For the right, you know, David, David built the kingdom inside Benjamin. For the right of inheritance is thine. All right. You find this, you find this prospect in Ruth chapter 4 verse 3. He had to sell it to someone in his family, and the next person in line that he can sell it to would be Jeremiah. Where is the rest of the family? Where is the kingsman that we read about in, in Ruth? They're either in Babylon or they're dead. Or they don't want it. But he's the next one. The for the right and the inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. Lord already told him, here comes your cousin. He's going to ask you to buy his property. Jeremiah, Whoo, here we go. Imagine if Jeremiah got a little re word of relief by the Lord. You know, I've been preaching all this doom and it hasn't really happened yet. Okay, this happened. And I bought the field of Hanamiel, Han my uncle's son. That was handy enough. And weighed him the money. Even 17 shekels of silver. Now weighed the money. They, the money was by weight, by scale. And I scribed the evidence, the paperwork, the document, and sealed it, and took witnesses and weighed him the money in the balances. They're doing all the legal documents, they're doing it all before witnesses. It is all proper court legal documentation of the procedures thereof that it can't be void. No one can say it was done wrong. So I took the evidence of the purchase, probably the deed, some kind of deed, 
both that which was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was opened. So here's a document that is sealed in an envelope by law, and there's a document that he holds that he can read that says it's his. I had that recently happen with me with the, with the school. I had to have a sealed, unopened document with my high school transcript inside. Which I would, would you would give it to the person that demanded it, and only that person had the authority to break that seal and open it. So no one else could say, "Hey, when the when the authorities open that envelope or whatever it is, it has not been doctored. It can't be doctored. It has been sealed." And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Barak, the son of Neriah. The son of Masahiah, I have probably said his name wrong many times, in the sight of Hanuel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of all the witnesses, this is, that subscribe the book of the purchase. Now, it, not only he's got the documented proof, but it's also written in the books of Jerusalem, in the books of Benjamin, in the books of Antioch. These books are written that you were to find them today. If they are still to be legible, you would find Jeremiah brought a piece of lot in Antioch from his uncle's son, documented, signed by witnesses. Just as much as if you were to find the documents to be told of the Roman kingdom, that there was a man named Joseph and a woman named Mary. She was big with pregnancy in a city called Bethlehem. Among all the numbers of all the Benjaminites that showed up. It's funny how David of Judah also lived in Bethlehem, an area of Benjamin. Before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison, and so he had witnesses. There are legal people sitting there in the prison. And I charge Barak before them, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, and this is by God and God of Israel, Take these evidence. This is the evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and the evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel, a clay vessel, that it may continue many days. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. Put it in a jar. So if you can find that jar, now when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase unto Barak the son of Neriah, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Oh, you know, he doesn't believe in evolution. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands, and recompenses the iniquity of the fathers unto the bosom of their children after them. The great and mighty God, the Lord of hosts, is his name. Now we were just read in, in, in uh, Ezekiel. The, the son shall not pay for the father, and the father shall not pay for the son. Their sin. Him that sinneth, he shall die. But well, why did Jeremiah say this? Because the fathers are teaching the children, and the children are doing what the fathers are telling them to do. They didn't say that the fathers went and got the wood, the children sparked the fire, and the women baked the, the cake. It's a family-wide thing. It's not like a child says, no, I'm going to do what's right. Dad, you do what's wrong, but I'm going to do what's right. Great, and we're going to talk about this land. Great in counsel, mighty, he's buttering God up. In work, but it's the truth. Thy eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men, to give every one according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing, which, set, which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, history, even unto this day. We're going to go to Babylon. And in Israel, that's the northern tribes, and among other men, Gentiles, those dogs, and has made thee a name as, yeah, as at this day. 
and has brought forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt, history, with signs, and with wonders, true, and with a strong hand, true, and with a stretched out arm, with great terror, yes, and has given them this land, which thou didst swear to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and This land is our land, this land is my land, given by God. Get it, get out the cannon and you say, listen, this is our land, God. You're a great and wonderful God. You you were wonderful in Egypt bringing us out. It's our land. And they came in and possessed it. Uh, Joshua. Notice how much history shows up. But they obeyed not thy voice. Neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all thou commandest them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. Evil. The results of sin. The consequences of sin. So evil is not really. <laughs> evil can be a VD by being with the wrong person. Evil can be ended up in jail for having something that's not yours. Evil could be losing everything because you don't know how to take care of it. Evil could be being driven out of the land because you have not done what God told you to do with the land. Behold the mounts. Uh-oh. That's building little ramps up and trying to get up over the city walls. They are come unto the city to take it. Here is the army. And the city is given to the hand of the you know you know where Jeremiah is going with this? And the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans that fight against it. There's battle coming. There's battle there. Uh, because of the sword and of the famine and of the peasants. Lord, this is what I've been preaching. And what thou hast spoken is come to pass. And behold, thou seest it. Here is the army. It's no more future. It's now. It is current event in, in the Jerusalem Post that Jeremiah is reading. You know, he gets a free newspaper in jail. And thou hast said unto me, here we go, O Lord God, buy thee the field for money and take witnesses, for the city is given the land in the hand of the judge. Lord, if this land is a Chaldean land, no more our land, why did you have me buy this land? Why on earth, if it's our land, no longer to be our land, because of our sins, which is true, you're the great God, you're going to, you're going to kick our butt out of here because we have sinned against you, but you told me to buy this land, which is no longer going to be my land. And you told me to do it all legal documentary, all legal with witnesses. God, yes, Jeremiah, what on earth are you doing? He did a lot of buttering up to, to get to God. What are you doing? Yeah, you, show, you see that in the book of Acts when they're before the king. Oh, king, you're just so wonderful in the provinces. Oh, you're just so great. What's the problem? Well, we got a problem with a guy named Paul. After all the butter on the buns and the, and the biscuits and all that, the problem is, you know, there, there's a fly stuck in the ointment. Jeremiah's fly in the ointment is, if it's not our land, why did I buy it? Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord. Yes, I am. <laughs> He's backing up what, God, what, he, what Jeremiah said to him. The God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? You find that in Genesis eighteen fourteen and Luke one thirty seven about two pregnancies. I believe I believe it's Rebecca shows up with about her pregnancy with the two children in the wounds and he goes up to Mary or Elizabeth, one of them. Now he uses it for a piece of land. The, therefore, thus saith the Lord: Behold, I will give this city into the hand of Chaldea. You know. Jeremiah is sitting there with, with that open deed of, uh, really? Then I'm holding a worthless 
document here. And into the hand of the king of uh, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take it. Okay. The value of the land just went down. This is not good news for a guy who's holding a property deed. The property is no longer going to be his. I mean, would, would it be if the guy that holds the property for this house, the city of Daytona, issues the title deed to whatever his name is, of the state of Florida, blah, 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 blah. And what if the Muslims came in, took over this country, and there's no more in the United States, there's no more Florida, there's no more uh, area called Daytona Beach, then that piece of document is just garbage. And the Chaldeans that fight against this city shall come and set the fire on this city and burn it with the houses. Now remember where he is. He's in the king's prison, so he's talking about Jerusalem. And burn it with the houses upon whose roofs they have offered incense unto Baal and poured out drink offerings unto other gods and provoked me anger. Don't forget, Jeremiah, they deserve this. Don't forget, Jeremiah, their sins. Don't forget, Jeremiah, this is not just something I just pulled out of my hat. For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. For the children of Israel, that's the north, have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith the Lord. For this city has been to me as a provocation of my anger and my fury from, day, from the day that they built it. Wow. Even unto this day that I should remove it from before my faith. What was one of the sins that happened in this city that really stood out in the Bible? Didn't David go for a little nightly walk one night? Wasn't this the place where, where a woman slept with a man that shouldn't have been and then the orders were to be to kill him? Is it the place where Solomon brought all the women of the strange women? So it really started with David. For all have sinned. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel and the children of Judah, north and south, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they... Their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, and the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned unto me the back, and not the face. Though I taught them rising, early, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. But they set their abomination in the house which is called by my name to defile it. They have brought the, the junk into God's house. Just as much as they've done it with the church house today. They have brought the junk in it. Wait to four days before Christmas to see how they bring the junk in. We already read about that with Jeremiah, about that tree. And they built, God say, listen, okay, Jeremiah, you gave me the history. Let me give you a history. And they built the high places of Baal. It's not God. That's not Jehovah. Which are in the valley of the sun and hid them. To cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire onto Molech. That's post-abortion. That's abortion after the child. That's murder. When I, com when I commanded them not, God said, I never told you to burn your children. Neither came into my mind. God never thought about you to sacrifice your child. Never. That they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. To sin. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, concerning this city, Jer Jerusalem, whereof you say, it shall be delivered in the hand of the king of the Babylon by the sword and by the famine. And by the pestles. That's exactly what Jeremiah has been saying. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whether I have driven them, in my anger and in my fury, in great wrath. You think God's a little angry? 
I had a guy tell me the other night he cannot believe in a God that gets angry. He hasn't read Jeremiah. He blamed man for all the troubles going on. Well, yeah, okay, but God is the author. Well, Satan, God allows Satan. Job 1, Job 2. Free will. Uh, uh, anger and great wrath, I will bring them again into this place and will cause them to dwell safely. Okay? God went through, okay, Jeremiah, you buttered me up. I'm going to give you a little history. I'm going to tell you about the history of the sins of the people. You told me the history of my of my great love, my great arm, my great strength. I'm going to tell you about the great sins. I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in all their hearts. That they should not depart from me. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will plant them in, the land, in, the land, in this land assuredly. With my whole heart. With my whole soul. That's God speaking. For thus saith the Lord, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people. So will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. The fields. And the fields. Remember what Jeremiah just bought? Shall be bought in this land. Whereof he say, it is desolate without man or beast. It is given the hand of the child of the It's true, it's going to be. But there's going to be a time the Jews are going to buy land again in this land. Men shall buy fields for money, Jeremiah, and subscribe the evidence, Jeremiah, just use you as a sign, and seal them, I use you as a sign, and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin, I just use you as a sign, and in the places about Jerusalem, I just use you as, in, as a sign, and in the cities of Judah, and in the cities of the mountains, I just use you to show hope to the people. And in the cities of the valley, in the cities of the, of the south, and I will cause their captivity to return, say the Lord. Jeremiah, I had you tell the people, guess what? You're coming back to the land. The land is not going to be desolate forever. Now let me ask you one question. That is an official document, right? As far as we can tell, that document has not ever shown up yet. It has never been unearthed, undug, or sitting in any museum. As far as we know right now, it may be sitting in a museum in, in a basement somewhere. But as far as we know, it being open and being known that this document in chapter 32 has not ever shown up. And it describes that Jeremiah owns land in the land of Antioch, right? Jeremiah has done right by God, hasn't he? Wouldn't it be interesting at the millennium? If God called Jeremiah up and said, Jeremiah, come here. Yeah. I want you to go possess your land. What land? Uh, Gabriel, give me that give me that earthen vessel. Uncap it. All right, this land right here. You bought Jeremiah back in BC 590. It's your land. You sealed it. You paid for it. Go get it. Because he's surely not going to be there when 70 years. We don't know how old he is now. Let's say, let's just say by chance, if, if he's a child, let's say 16 years old. Let's just say by chance. You're talking about 86 years old, he's going to come in and pull, hey, this is my land. Here's my land. I said, I said, this is my land. You gotta speak louder. I, I lost my hearing. I can't read it. Somebody read, read it for me. My eyesight's gone. Do you think a guy 86 years old is gonna pop up and say, that, you know, what else? What's he gonna do with him? He ain't got long to live after that. God told him to buy the land, right? Does God ever do anything in vain? 
If not, if it, if it does not go to Jeremiah, well, wait a minute. Jeremiah never got married, did he? He never had any children, did he? So it's not an inheritance he passes on to his sons. He never had sons. Now, maybe a brother of his that has children, maybe, would come and take these evidence and rightfully be the kinsman of the property. Maybe. But that property had to go somewhere in reference reference of Jeremiah. And I may be wrong, but maybe it goes back to Jeremiah in the millennium. Where is this document? Where is the Ark of the Covenant? Who are the priests? Who is the high priest? No one knows but God. Where is Jimmy Hoffa? Nobody knows but God. What was the other thing we were talking about the other day that those guys that broke out of Alcatraz, where are they? No one knows. God does. Wherever this document is today, it would be funny if it's still sitting in a jar somewhere. Preserved. Just as much as the Dead Sea Scrolls. The other fragments they've, they've found and discovered. Is this Jeremiah's reward that the land will be conquered by Babylon? Yes, and it was. And maybe the fact is that when God comes and plants him, gives him a new heart, that does not happen, Ezra and Nehemiah. Because they sin again, and the city is destroyed in 70 AD by Titus. God jumps right over to millennia, and he talks about that property. Maybe I'm just saying, maybe, and I could be wrong, but maybe that property that he bought... Jeremiah, your reward is, listen, you're going to die at a certain age. I'll give you that property for a thousand years. With your Messiah ruling. And nobody against you. And with the whole city that you're living, they all love you. And you can go back to your home and look, the book's named after me. Saying that property had to go somewhere, God doesn't do anything vain. Something to think about.